Hi boys and girls, Kathy here from Wasaka Beach Public Library. How are you today? I hope you've taken a moment to look outside and get some fresh air and give someone in your house a big hug because everybody could use that. All right, so our story time today is called On a Snowy Night by Jean Biffle. Can you see that okay? Rosa Rabbit wanted to bite somebody. When Rosa was given to Brandon on his fifth birthday, he had shouted, she's better than perfect, mom. He stroked her, fed her bits of carrots, apples from his fingers, she nibbled, but never been him once. Who loves Rosa Rabbit, he asked. And soon he answered, I do. And Rosa Rabbit was happy. Here's our happy rabbit. And this is Christmas past, just like us. Now Rosa was not happy at all. Brandon had grown up big and he was too busy playing with boys to bother with a rabbit very often. Rosa watched Brandon's sister showing her guinea pig a Christmas tree. Tonight we're hanging up stockings, she said. I'm so excited I can hardly wait. Rosa Rabbit was not excited. She was hungry and lonely and sure nobody loved her. Poor Rosa Rabbit. Suddenly Brandon burst in. No, what, Rosa Rabbit? It's snowing again. It's almost a blizzard. Rosa probably doesn't even remember what snow is, his sister said. But Brandon lifted Rosa out of her cage, held her tight, and ran outside into the winter dusk. He put her down gently in a stretch of fresh snow. How do you like the snow, Rosa, he asked. Hmm. Just then, his mother called, Brandon, telephone. Oh, I I'm coming. He yelled as he raced back to the house. Rosa waited and waited for him to come back. A gust of wind sent a burst of snowflakes right into her eyes. When Brandon still did not come, she tried to follow his footprints, but it was dark and she could not see them any longer. She was lost. She hadn't been outside in winter before, certainly not in a long time. Fluff up your feathers, said a small, clear voice. Rosa gazed at the little bird. I don't have feather feathers, she said through chattering teeth. Maybe we can have cheeked the bird. A flock of tiny chickadees flew down to her. They fluffed up their down to make soft, busy blanket against the biting wind. One hopped up between Rosa's soft ears and asked if that helped. Rosa nodded, but she was still shivering. It's not nice to be cold. Look who's here, peeked another of the birds. Rosa lifted her head and peered through the swarming snowflakes. A creature with a tall tail appeared to be dropping something right in front of her. Can you see what that is? I wonder what that is. The squirrels went behind Rosa and gave her a push. Rosa jumped forward and her ice cold front paws landed on something. She moved around until she could get all four paws onto it. The chickadees tumbled off her back and whirled up in a cloud of wings. Rosa knew she was on Brandon's neck. She almost smiled as she settled into the warm, wonderful world. Thanks, she mumbled to the squirrel, where the snow deepened. It's snowing and snowing and snowing. I'll get you something to eat said a loud voice. A raccoon waddled across the tall white shape nearby. He scrambled up it and came back with a carrot. He dropped it right in front of Rosa. Oh, I think it's supposed to be a nose, he said. Where do you think he got that carrot? Can you see that? Have you guys made a snowman yet? I hope so. Rosa bit into the carrot. Never before had any food tasted so delicious. She really likes it, the raccoon boasted. We can see that, Bunny, snapped Mouse. Peering up with longing, Rosa knew how it felt to be hungry. Every so often, Brandon forgot to feed her. She rolled the last little bite of carrot with her nose and watched the mouse pounce on it. She felt almost warm. She's sharing her food that the animals are sharing with her. That's very nice. That's how we should all be. 
Rosa Rabbit stared around at her new friends. I thought wild animals ate each other, she said. Not on this night, the boy said from a tree branch above. Even tasty little morsels like you are safe tonight. It's a hawk, cheeked the chickadees, trying to sound brave. So we've had a few animals there. Looks like a raccoon, a mouse, a squirrel, chickadees, and the bunny rabbits, and then the hawk. Rosa gazed up into the shadowy branches and remembered the house was nice and warm. Far away, somebody was calling. I must go home, she said. The boy will be in trouble. She stared into the darkness and trembled. But I don't know where home is. You need to turn around, said the hawk. I can guide you. I know where your boy lives. The hawk is helping. Rosa tried to move forward, but her paws felt stiff. In spite of the mitten's warmth, the snow was so deep. I'm stuck. Don't be silly. You can hop, said the mouse. He's right, said the raccoon. Be brave. Everybody is coaxing her on and helping her. Then Rosa remembered Brandon shouting. She's better than perfect. I can, she told herself, and she hopped with all her might. She sprang out of the snow, and the hawk swooped down and flew ahead. The others followed him. Soon they were in front of the house. Sounds like Rosa's going to be okay. Brandon was just coming out the door. Rosa gazed up at him. She looked back at the creatures who had helped her when she was almost lost and afraid. Thank you, thank you, everyone. As they scampered and flew away, she hopped up on the porch steps and thumped with her hind foot. Brandon looked down and saw her. For one moment, he stared at her, not believing his eyes. Then he leapt forward and lifted her up into his arms. Oh, Rosa, when I couldn't find you, I thought I'd lost you forever, Brandon cried. She could have bitten him then, but she did not. His arms were warm and she was snuggled close. He did not need to tell her who loved Rosa Rabbit. She knew. Isn't that a wonderful story about all the friends, how they helped each other? No matter what, there was other things going on. And I hope that's the way you are too. Always trying to help people and offer to make things even better. Well, you have a great day and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.